Welcome to Five Minutes on the Net with Dad. Look how far the we've come Wow, well, here we are. Deck Plus here again, director of the Serious Writers Guild. And this is our 30 seconds in four minutes on the net with deck. I hope you're following the series. Got some good stuff for you this week from Israel. Good friend of mine, a member over there called Yossi, and he's always asking me questions. He's got one question. He, it's an old chestnut about copyright. What do I need to do to copyright my, my songs? Is it okay to just go on a site and he named it, I think it was copyright.com and just go on there and pay your money and copyright your songs. I said, well, you see, go back over the four minutes stuff I've said in the past about this and you'll find that the real truth is that a song is copyright, legally copyright, from the first moments it's written on anything. Just write it down, write the words down, jot the music down, the chord symbols, whatever. Anything in hard form. Now, that could be a CD, it could be on your Pro Tools, it could be anything. But that's basically the law. All the rest of it, all the, the proof is purely for court purposes, to back up your claim. In the States, they say you've got to go to the Library of Congress to put in your copyright. Yeah, because it's expected in the States. There are very few countries who actually do that sort of stuff. And be careful with the Library of Congress because they charge for each song. So the idea is to, to get five or six or ten songs together. And, uh, and that way it's much cheaper. Second thing he was on about was MTV. Who decides what's going to be played on MTV? Well, the fact of the matter is all down to playlists. It's like Radio 1 in the UK. Who decides the playlist? It's a panel. Now, I'm not privy to the information on MTV, but I'm sure it's that sort of panel or somebody suggests. If you've got a, a song which is like a gangland style, it's, a, it's, it's just such a massive worldwide hit. You put it on YouTube and you've got a million views in, in 10 seconds. Well, then, of course, they're going to put it on MTV. They have to. They're a commercial organization. But to actually get one of your songs on would... I would suggest that it has to be done the classic way of through a record company and their plugging people. But you could then, you could release the song yourself as a download or as a hard copy a CD and, and then get a plugger involved. But that sort of international plugger, I'm sure, would cost a lot of money. And be careful because, because pluggers tend to see the size of your checkbook first. And that's the truth of the matter. Now, what was the last thing he said? Oh, yeah, monitors. The age old thing of monitors. If ever I talk to amateurs, novices, and I always say a novice is a person who hasn't made a fortune in the music industry yet. Yet. <laughs> They'll always say, uh, oh, no, the latest thing, and they sell this on YouTube, and they sell that in the magazine, and they've got to have the latest, and that. oh, they sound very good, and all that. No, 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 no. That's not the way we work in the business. There's only one monitor that we use, and that's NS10. Ubiquitous NS10. And they're not so ubiquitous now, meaning they're all over the place, but they're esoteric, which means they're very, very specialized. And you'll see them, if you go onto the website of any reputable producer, including myself, you'll see a picture in the studio, and it'll always be those NS10s with the white cones. And to prove that point, just look up a YouTube one. I'll put the link down below. The YouTube one of the Mastering Suite at Abbey Road Studio. And there they are. And it stands. And he's mixing a dance track. No, it's a hip-hop track he's mixing. But there we go. There's three bits of fantastic information for you this, this week. By the way, the... NS10s are not easy to source, not easy to source. Studio Spares in the UK do a SN10 and Yamaha themselves have this week released a whole new series of powered uh, monitors which they hope will get them back at the forefront of monitors as they were. My sound engineer last night was doing, I'm a bit tired today, I've just been on short tour, but um, he said to me last night, the reason why they stopped making the NS10s, the Yamaha in a sense, was they couldn't source the proper paper for the cones. I think that's an urban myth, don't you? So there we are, four minutes, three good tips for this week. Shall I get you a gag? I will. <laughs> 
A guy has got um, slight embarrassing gentleman's problems. So he goes to a this guy he's heard about. He's sort of a witch doctor guy, and he says, I've got these problems. So can you prescribe something, perhaps Viagra? They said, no, 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 no need for Viagra. He said, there's a great way I can tell you. When you lie with your wife, all you have to say is one, two, three. Everything will behave properly and it will be wonderful. He said, that's incredible. He said, but um, tell me, when I want everything to stop and, you yeah. know? He said, well, all you have to do is say one, two, three, four. So that's great. So he goes home in the bed that night and he thinks, here we go. So he says, one, two, three. His wife looked at him and said, what did you say one, two, three, four? <laughs> it's a good one for the job tomorrow. Oh, for the gig tomorrow night. Listen, see you next week. This is Dick Klusky saying bye-bye.